All right, in this video, we're going to be discussing how to use the graphing calculator to handle a matched paired t-test. So let's read the problem and make sure that it is a matched paired or dependent t-test. It says an English teacher wants to test her grammar instruction to test if her grammar instruction is effective. Ten students are pre- and post-tested by counting the number of errors missed by the students reading an essay. Use the results below on a 2% significance level to test the claim that the program produces some change in the student's ability to spot errors in written work. Okay, so this 2% significance level and the phrase test the claim make me feel that this is a hypothesis test. The layout of the data and the description of the problem tells me that this is a dependent t-test. You see each student was pre-tested and post-tested, so every student gets measured twice, so the data has that dependency in it, so it's a dependent t-test. Alright, so what we're going to do to enter this data into the calculator is we're going to press STAT, and then after you press the STAT key, you just hit ENTER, and this is going to take you to where the list of data are. Now, we need to put this data into L1 and L2, list 1 and list 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, because I have numbers in my list 1 already, I'm going to come up to the top where the L1 is, so I push up on the up arrow until I get to where L1 is highlighted, and I hit clear. And then I'm going to push down arrow to move me back into the list, and you'll see the list deletes all the numbers that were there. If I go over to L2, I can do the same thing, I push up to where L2 is, I hit clear, I push down, and the list is cleared. So go back over to L1 now, and we're going to type in all these numbers. So let's go ahead and type in 12, then 14, then 5, then 21, then 17, then 18, then 4, then 7, then 13, and then finally 10. Okay, when we check, we do have 10 numbers, and a quick glance indicates that uh, we haven't typed anything in incorrectly. It all looks pretty good. Okay, so all my numbers are in there correctly. Now let's type the next list in. The post-test goes in L2, so we're going to do 8, enter, 11, enter, 0, enter, 12, enter, 7, enter, 10, enter, 1, enter, 2, enter, 4, enter, and 7, enter. Okay, again, scrolling through the list to make sure I didn't make any typos. All that's done. Okay, now the strategy in this procedure then is to, basically normally we're supposed to subtract these values, and then we use a row of differences as our actual data. So we combine these two sets of data into just one set of data, right? So the way we do that, we subtract them. So what we're going to actually do is tell our calculator to do that subtraction for us. So let's get out of this screen. So we're going to hit second and quit, or second in the mode key. So second mode, or second quit. And that takes us out of the screen that had the list. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to tell it to do an operation on the list. And the way this works is we're actually going to hit this second key. I'm going to type 1 because that's going to bring up that little yellow L1. So second and 1 brings up L1. That's the pretest list. Then I'm going to subtract, so put minus, and then we're going to do second L2. So second the number 2, second and the number 2 will bring up L2 for us. So it's L1 minus L2. What that's going to do is do the subtraction for us for each of those 10 values, and it gives us the answers there. So you can see 12 minus 8 gives us 4 in the calculator, right? And then the next one, 14 minus 11, gave us the 3. All right, now what you want to do is you want to store that into list 3. So we're going to hit the STOW key right above the ON key, S-T-O key. So hit STOW. And we're going to hit SECOND and the number 3, because that's where list 3 is located. So you always have to hit SECOND to get the list for that key. So SECOND 3 gives you list 3. So now you hit ENTER. And your answers that you just got for that subtraction are stored in a list. You can check that by hitting the STAT key. And we're going to go edit again, so hit enter. You can see that list 3 now has all the differences, and you can confirm that all those differences are in fact correct. All right, once you've done that, now it's time to do the test. So we're going to press the stat key one more time. So press stat. You're going to arrow over to where it says test, and you're going to go to where you see the t-test, which is option number 2. So arrow down to 2 and hit enter. Now, in this case, we're going to actually use the input as data because our input is stored in list 3. Our data is in list 3. So we're going to leave it on data, or if it's not on data, you're going to go to where your data is and hit enter. And then you're going to scroll down to where it asks for this mu sub 0. In other words, it wants to know what the value is that we believe the difference should be. So in these tests, the difference is almost always 0. So unless they specify a specific improvement, you know, if this teacher thinks that we're going to uh, have some change, and the change is going to be a change of 10 points, then we would type in 10 there. But it doesn't say anything like that. It just says here, test the claim that the program produces some change 
We don't know what change, just some change in the student's ability to spot errors. So we're going to leave that as zero. And we're going to go leave this as, as L3. If it's not L3, you hit second and the number three. So second and the number three will give you L3 in that position. Then you arrow down to where it says frequency. That frequency should be left as one. In other words, you want each of the numbers in that list to only be counted once. So leave that alone. Come over here and we have to enter in the symbol that you would find in your HA. So remember the calculator doesn't do everything for us. We do have to come up with the HO and the HA ourselves. When you read this problem, it says that we're going to test the claim that the program produces some change in the student's ability to spot errors. Now you may say, well, if her program is supposed to help, you would think that there'd be less errors, but it doesn't say that in the claim, right? It just says test the claim that the program produces some change. So there's going to be some change. We don't know what kind of change. We don't know if it'll be more errors or less, right? So when we say some change, we're just going to say that the amount of uh, the subtraction values here should not be zero. In other words, if it's zero, it means nothing changed, right? Their pretest score and their post-test score would be the same. So we're gonna say that it's not equal to zero. So the difference is should not equal to zero, so I'm gonna highlight not equal to and hit enter for that. And lastly, I come down here and I push the calculate button, and by doing that, it'll do the work for me. And it tells me that my T value is 6.65 after rounding. That's highly significant. You can tell also that the P value for the test is 0 .000094. So there's four zeros, 0 .000940. So that's the P value, that's very small. It's gonna be less than our alpha of 2%. And so we would ultimately conclude that we should reject the null hypothesis. Another nice thing that this calculator does for us, of course, it gives us the sample mean. That's going to be for the differences. It tells us basically what X bar D is. And then SD, the standard deviation for those differences, is also given in this process as well. It tells you the number of differences as well, N equals 10. Okay, so that's it. And basically we have the calculator output. Of course, you know, the rest of the work would have to be done by hand if you want to you know, word the final conclusion and all of that, the calculator does not do that for you. But it will get you the test stat and it will give you the p-value, which will help you make a decision. It will also get you the sample mean and it will also get you the sample standard deviation. So it's very helpful.